and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. It gets worse. <laughs> Just this week, Michelle Bachman actually, actually predicted that I would bring about the biblical end of days. Now that's a legacy. I mean, Lincoln, Washington, they didn't do that. <laughs> Jesus Christ would not vote for Barack Obama. Jesus Christ would not vote for Barack Obama. Christ would not vote for Barack Obama because Barack Obama has behaved in a way that is inconceivable for Christ to have behaved. Jesus Christ would not vote for Barack Obama. He supports a lifestyle that the Bible calls an abomination. Mr. Obama says he's a Christian, but he supports the destruction of innocent and sacred. You might ask, how could a Christian nation, almost 100% Catholic, to elect a monster like Hitler? The truth is, at the beginning, Hitler didn't look like or talk like a monster at all. He talked like an American politician. And we've seen Obama really come into his own, really grow into maturity as a dictator. He said many times at the beginning of the year that he was just the president, that we had divided powers. He said 22 times that he didn't have the authority to just make law. But by the end of the year, he was telling his friends, I changed the law for you. I know some people want me to bypass Congress and change the laws on my own. And change the laws on my own. And, and believe me, uh, right now dealing with Congress, the idea, believe me, the idea of, of doing things on my own is very tempting. What you're not paying attention to is the fact that I just took an action to change the law, change the law, change the law. No. no, Obama can't do that. He can't violate uh, con uh, congressional law because he feels like it, like he's on the border and guns and power plants. But it's this image that has folks talking. It's a picture of Adolf Hitler and the symbol of communism, a hammer and sickle. The words read, Comrade Obama. Adolf Hitler was the president, was the head of the National Socialist Party in Germany. So there is a connection between President Obama's leaning, uh, very well-documented leanings towards socialism. One-time Alaskan governor Sarah Palin has solidified her status as the leader of the radical right wing, likening President Obama to Adolf Hitler. In a tweet Thursday, Palin endorsed an article by conservative columnist Thomas Sowell, which argues that Obama's establishment of a BP escrow fund would result in the administration embracing Nazi-like dictatorial powers. Georgia Republican Congressman Paul Brown says he fears President-elect Obama could establish a Marxist dictatorship. Brown said in an interview Monday, quote, it may sound a bit crazy and off base, but, but he's the one who proposed this national security force. That's exactly what Hitler did in Nazi Germany. It's exactly what the Soviet Union did. He's showing me signs of being Marxist. You have to remember that Adolf Hitler was elected in a democratic Germany and quote Paul Brown. Watch for Peyton to speak to the, the nation as a president of the United States would speak to the nation tonight and tell them I am the dictator. I am the dictator. I am the one that's going to take care of everything. That Obama, his powers are so unprecedented that even congressmen now are saying Obama is enacting dictator dictatorial powers by saying that yes, I'll follow some laws, but overall I'll do anything I want. He has already used dictator-style powers to go We've ahead got and do Obama. anything he wants. He's no longer a U.S. president. He is now a dictator. We are now a transnational union. And unfortunately, as of today, Obama 
is now a dictator. Down to, I believe, worldview and ideology. What is the worldview that you hold? We see that Barack Obama has probably one of the most radical ideologies of anyone ever to occupy the White House. He embraces the ideas of a economic Marxist who believes in full-on redistribution of wealth. But he also embraces the worldview when it comes to foreign policy of essentially a one-world government point of view, Mm -hmm. where he is not as concerned about United States sovereignty. He's very willing to see the United States power flow into world organizations. Absolute power, which is as corrupt as it ever gets. In studying dictatorships, which I've done since I'm about 18 years old, I've never heard a dictator say he's doing anything illegally. Never. Even Hitler said that everything he did was within the law. Did you you know that? I mean, our National Action Network president, Barack Hussein Obama, said he's going to act within the law. Mussolini said he was acting within the law when he violated the law. Hitler said he was acting within the law uh, when he needed some living space for the Germans, Liebenstraus, Liebenstraum. He wasn't invading Czechoslovakia because he wanted to conquer Czechoslovakia. He said he had the legal right to, to engage in getting some living space for the German people. That's all. Everything's legal. Pol Pot did it legally. So dictatorship didn't happen overnight. It took five years, gradually, little by little, to escalate up to a dictatorship. Obamacare is a horribly, horribly written law. And as much as President Obama believes he can do whatever he wants, the Constitution says otherwise. When did Obama assert that he could do whatever he wants? He's rewritten 30 or 40 different parts of Obamacare by administration action. George W. Bush did the exact same thing with Medicare Part D. No, he did not. The exact same thing. This is something we ought to be really, really troubled about, don't you think? You are exactly right. It is one of the most profoundly troubling aspects of the Obama administration is the degree to which this is a lawless administration. We've never seen a president who picks and chooses the way this president does. This is entirely lawless. Because, and the fact that nobody is talking about this, the executive executes the laws. As you say, this is another example of Obama rewriting a law unilaterally and nobody is complaining. Understand, President Obama cannot legally do what he proposed to do yesterday and the media let him get away with claiming. He can't fix part of a law that he doesn't like by fiat. Our president is not a king, is not a king. If Congress won't act soon to protect future generations, I will. I will direct, I will direct my cabinet to come up with executive actions we can take now and in the future to reduce pollution, prepare our communities for the consequences of climate change, and speed the transition to more sustainable Hitler sources of energy. Hitler has often protested that his plans for conquest do not extend across the Atlantic Ocean, but his submarines and radars prove otherwise. And so does the entire design of his new world order. For example, I have in my possession a secret map made in Germany by Hitler's government, by the planners of the new world order. President Obama calling for a new world order. Well, there have been extraordinary scenes in Berlin tonight as thousands of people gathered to hear Barack Obama deliver key foreign policy speech on his current European tour. The Democratic presidential hopeful laid out his vision for America's place in a new world order, saying he was speaking as a proud citizen of the United States. In creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. And for the international order that we have worked for generations to build. This, as the president pledged to shape, quote, a new international order. President Obama called for a new U.S. role on the world stage. So we have to shape.